The Channel Mom Show, celebrating you with Jenny Dean Schmidt. If you're a busy mom, get someone else to send your personalized cards for much less than a store-bought card and stamp. It's that easy. Just click on Send Out Cards. Now, we're going to solve your summer problems right away, right before summer starts. You ready, Shell? I am ready, but we're ready for summer to start. My yes. goodness. Yeah, I am too. I know some moms really do dread summer when it comes to entertaining their kids or keeping them in line. And, and they look forward to it, too, but they're worried about meltdowns and attitudes and, you know, uh, demanding. Slothfulness. Yeah, exactly. So our Real Moms, Real Answers team is here to help you today. Linda Williams and Ann Wiggins, mother and daughter duo and authors of Parenting from the Heights. We are so blessed to have you. Welcome, ladies. Thank you, Good, Jenny. Good morning, Jenny. Hi, Linda. Nice to, to hear from you. And Ann, I know that you're hunkered down in your, or not, you're hunkered down in your garage because you've got a cell phone and that's the only place that works the best, right? Yep, I'm out in the garage, loving life. <laughs> <laughs> Smelling the fumes. Okay, let's just start with you then, Anne. What is your first pointer for keeping your kids functioning and happy during the summer months? Well, I think everybody enjoys free time when they have a little bit less of it. So giving your children unlimited free time from morning until night is not something that fosters appreciation for having that time to themselves. So providing some structure for them. I think daily chores are a must. And, and as Casey just so well pointed out, some people work well with charts and stickers and check marks. And other people, probably more like me, just wake up and think, no, what do I need done today? And then we'll assign the chores out as they need to be done. And whatever you do, it doesn't matter. It depends on your personality. But giving children some things that they're responsible for doing and then maybe having some set time for even just uh, an hour of reading or, or an hour of um, practicing your multiplication facts on games on the Internet or whatever it is, and then interspersing that with free time so that they have smaller chunks of it and they will appreciate that play time more than if they're just left to go all day long. Yeah, and then there's the dreaded TV summer where they just sit in front of the TV all summer. We turn our TV off during the summer for that reason because we just don't want the kids to zone out in front of the TV all summer. And I'm not condemning people that do this. I know sometimes they're, they're desperate measures they take, but, but I just would not want my kids sitting in front of the TV all summer. Shelly has a good question for Linda about uh, contentment. Talk, go ahead, Shell. Yeah, so my question was with the summer and the free time, how do you just generate a spirit of contentment with this? That, that there's, there's a, there doesn't have to be some entertaining moment every day. Right, that is a good question, and I'm glad you asked it. I think the problem that we moms have is that we think we're responsible for our kids' happiness. Yeah. When in truth, you are the one that's responsible for your own happiness. You really can't make your kid happy long-term. You can give them a present. They're real happy for a short time. Then they get bored with that. Happiness comes from inside, and it's a choice we all make. And I'm going to sort of jump on what Ann said. The, the quickest way to have unhappy children is when they have so many things and their mother's undivided attention. Moms, do not give 24-7 attention. You're not responsible for keeping your kid happy. That's something your child has to do for himself, and you can set up the environment, again, with not giving them unlimited um, attention where they have to become creative. You're really stifling their creativity when you try to micromanage your kid too much. Right. So if this is a limited kind of thing, um, they do appreciate it much more. Yeah. Now, Linda, you were a, an, an elementary teacher for years, so you know how to occupy children, and Anne, you're, you homeschool. So can you give moms some tips? I mean, I know there are working moms out there who, are gonna, who need to put their kids in boys and girls clubs and things like that, but for the time they do have at home with their kids and then also stay-at-home moms, what are some very constructive things that you can say to your kids about time on their own uh, so they don't look to you all, because I do think we live in a society now where moms just feel like it has to be nonstop attention, nonstop entertainment. They are responsible for their kids' happiness. How do you get your kids to realize, hey, you know what? You're going to have to figure out how to be happy on your own, and here are some activities that might help. What are you okay. thinking? I, I'm going to jump in on this, Anne, for a second. Yeah, and I'm just going to say that uh, when they come to you with things to do, and you usually offer a few suggestions, like ride your bike or go get on your scooter you know, uh, do some coloring. It's never exactly what they want to do. Whatever you <laughs> offer generally will not be pleasing That's to them. True. So what you say is, would you like to pull something from the job jar, which you have, you know, a little something container with all kinds of 
chores. Would you like to pull something from the job jar while you and I both sort of think about what you might do next, or do you have something in mind to go do now? So now you're putting the responsibility back on the child to come up with his or her own idea, which is really what they need to be doing most of the time. I'm not advocating you never play with your kids or interact. That would be terrible. But I'm saying the bulk of the summertime, they need to make the choices themselves. They need to come up with it themselves with as little direction as you can give, other than you can help them get through this and they'll work for you. Yeah, otherwise when they're adults, they're going to have to call you every time they want to feel a little bit happier. Mom, what can I do? Um, We are talking, by the way, to Linda Williams and Ann Wiggins, the marvelous authors of Parenting from the Heights. We just love them. And let's talk briefly because you've got some great ideas. I think that one thing happens in summer, and I know I'm I'm guilty of it. We get tired as moms come come mid-July, and we think, okay, just eat whatever you want and watch whatever show you want to because I'm tired. How do you keep kids on a, a pattern of healthy snacking and not indulging in in television and, and bad forms of entertainment all summer long? Well, children will eat what you have in your house. Right. So if you don't want them to eat junk food and drink soda, the best way is to not have it, which is kind of what we do. And I'll tell you what, it helps so much financially. Uh, we were talking yesterday, Jenny, about how much snack foods add to your grocery bill. It will skyrocket your grocery bill. So what we have learned to do, and I say learned because I've gotten better over the years. I used to be much worse at this is only having available the stuff I want them to eat and then taking what little bit of time it takes to cut up some little cubes of cheese and put them in a baggie in the fridge and have some vegetable sticks and some hummus ready to go and have fruit available and have it washed and ready, you know. So it's not really any harder than it would be to open up a a pouch of sticky fruit snacks, but they're getting it apple instead of all of the high fructose corn sugar that goes along with those prepackaged things. So just simply having available what that is. And then if you have children that really complain about that, that's so easy to help with. You just say to them, I have heard that those snack foods are addicting and I think that we have a problem with this. And what I've learned is the worse the problem is, the longer we need to go without those things. So you have just shown me we need to take off some significant time here, but I will know how long based on your reaction. So if you have a fit, that tells me we need to go even longer. Sure, and I want to normally, and, and I want to promote the fact that there are some healthy snacks out there. I know that there's the the pouch of almond butter that the kids can just have, or their their little yogurts. Then you got to get the good ones, not the ones that are loaded with sugar. And of course, our official snap snack sponsor is pop chips and that's a really reasonably healthy potato chip and they can feel like they're indulging a little bit but they're not getting all the sugar and salt that that is added to and bad oils that is added to a lot of potato chips so there are things they can do that it that doesn't necessarily involve your work but for the most part what you're saying is take 10 minutes a day and cut out some cheese and make sure you got carrot sticks available right Oh, absolutely. And, you know, then when they do get the pop chips, those are such a special treat, and they appreciate them more. They're not just one of the many things that they munch on all day. I also don't let my kids walk around the house eating all the time. They eat at the table or outside. That's it. And it keeps them from wanting to just eat all day, every day, and constantly whining for food because they honestly would rather be doing something than sitting at the table. So it kind of cuts down on the amount of snacks that you have to continue to provide. I love that rule. It it makes for less cleaning for mom. I I need to make that rule this summer because they eat everywhere. And I mean, I'll get in my bed and I'll have all kinds of cereal in my bed because my kids crawled in my bed. And and so I love that rule. I think it's going to come into the Schmidt household. Linda, can you just, I, I know there are moms out there who... Maybe you're even dreading summer. I'm not. I do enjoy spending summer with my kids, but I'm not looking forward to the attitudes that might develop about mid-July where they expect entertainment and Disney World every day when we wake up. How do you get moms to come to that place where they think, I am not a bad mommy if, I don't have, if I'm not taking them to the swimming pool every day? Yes, that's true. Um, I, and I think some of the things you're talking about are generated by siblings. I think there's a lot of sibling stuff where you're constantly having a child run up to you and report on the other child's behavior. And I think what you do there, because when you have siblings, you rarely see the whole thing. You just hear about what happened to one child. You just, again, we want to make our children more and more responsible for their own uh, happiness and for their, uh, their own initiatives. So you would just say to that child, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if you can work this out with your brother or sister. If I need to get involved, I don't have time to do it right this minute, so go pull something from the job jar. And, you know, when you finish that job, then we'll talk about it. Or is this something you think you can work out? Or you could even say to both of them, come in here, I want you to sit in these two chairs, you know, opposite ends of the house so they don't interact with each other. 
and I'm going to give you some thinking time so that you can explain to me exactly what happened and then just kind of table their activities for maybe 15 minutes to a half an hour depending on their age. Go to them at the end of that and say, now, can the two of you work this out or do I need to get involved here? Because if I need to get involved, there will probably be a consequence for you. Right. And so what you want to do is gradually work your way out of solving problems. Another life skill, they need to be able to have relationships, to fix uh, problems in their relationships. So let's start them when they're little. Yeah, we have to remember as mothers, we really are supposed to be preparing them for the world. And so your kids can't call you every time they want to be entertained when they're 28 years old, nor can they call you and say, guess what so-and-so did to me at work? Solve it, mom. You have to figure out for them a way for them to work it out themselves, which, which I love. And that's a good... By the way, do they ever do anything in that job jar, Linda? Or <laughs> is it just the threat sitting there? Do they? Oh, end- oh no, no, no. You, and I didn't explain that, but take some little container right on slips of paper, jobs like dusting, vacuuming, washing windows, sweeping driveways, mopping floors, really have some good ones and have high standards for those jobs. You may have to teach those jobs the first couple of times through them so that it's not a job that's done in 30 seconds, but you know they're going to do a good job, come get you, have you check it for them, and then just put it back in the job jar so it can get drawn again. You can put cleaning toilets. You can do all kinds of great jobs yeah. in the job jar. I choose cleaning toilets. I love that. We've got about 40 seconds left, Anne, and I want you to let people know we will direct you to Linda and Anne and their book, Parenting from the Heights, on channelmom.com, so you can go there to get further information. Just one quick word, Anne, that you have for moms about summer and how to regard it. I would say keep activities simple. Uh, give if, if you have an age-appropriate child, give them a rope. Uh, you would not believe how much fun children have with ropes. Now, obviously, they have to be old enough that you can trust them not to accidentally hang themselves. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, you know, get, give them a bunch of clothespins and some cotton balls and see what they do. It, you, just come up with, sometimes I'll make a, a bag of just bizarre nonsense things and put them together and say, see what you can do with this. And they have the most fun trying to come up with some game or something that they can make out of them. Keep it simple. Let their imaginations take over. Your imagination is shot by this time, Mom, because, you know, you've been raising kids all this time. Let their imaginations take over. Have fun. Yeah, fabulous advice. And, Anne, you are a prayer warrior, and I want to thank you for praying for me because you helped me a great deal yesterday. So I want to just, you know, acknowledge that. So thank you for your it's prayers. An honor. Yes, an well, honor. thank you. And we, and we love you both, Linda and Anne. 